Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of January 14, 2024. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week, without a doubt. Big moves happening in the sky now. Boy, is this a very special time. This week is massive. It is one that many astrologers have been waiting for with bated breath. Not only do we have the most intense day of the year, but Pluto is also moving back into the sign of Aquarius. Just before he does, that's when we get that most intense energy of the sun meeting Pluto in the sky. Well, all of this adds up to, in key ways, a culmination moment of energy that's been with us since 2008, when Pluto first moved into the sign of Capricorn. But what we also have here is energy reminiscent of what was taking place in the spring of 2023. This awakening that was happening at that time when Pluto just dipped into the sign of Aquarius and then dipped out. So now Pluto is going to get a longer stay in Aquarius um, right to the 3rd of September at which time we're going to get that little bit of a retrograde back into Capricorn. And then the 20th of November is when Pluto will move back into the sign of Aquarius. Won't be back in Capricorn again for the rest of our lifetimes. Pluto and Capricorn this year at these key windows I just gave you, well, it's doing remarkable things. And I find it so fascinating. We're going to have Pluto at the very end of the sign of Capricorn meeting the sun. And when I tell you it's the very end, it is literally just moments after this conjunction perfects that we are going to have the sun change signs, moving into the sign of Aquarius. And it's going to be about 11 hours later that Pluto moves into Aquarius as well. This is what astrologers call an anoretic degree, when a planet is at 29 degrees of any given sign. It is considered a point of culmination and conclusion. Uh, some ancients called it a crisis point as well. And I sort of debated whether or not to use that language with you because I know language means different things in different contexts and different periods of time. But the important thing to remember here is that this energy is so concentrated. But for some of us, key lessons that we have been in, in one way or another, since going all the way back to 2008, it's going to feel like all of that is right on the surface for us in powerful, if not difficult ways as well. It can be this energy that speaks very profoundly to a sense of what it is that must change, but also where it is that we're powerless towards certain significant changes. Where it is, our greatest power now is to accept or surrender. Pluto does reveal the truth, but it's a, a truth that tends to be what's called the underbelly, right? It's like what's under the surface, what we don't want to look at, that truth that's messy, maybe even gross. It is a truth that feels unfair at times, unjust sometimes. But it is showing us something about what really lies underneath sometimes beautiful facades can either enhance its beauty with its imperfection or can reveal that where we are considering beauty exists, that really might not be the place. And in that way, Pluto does get us very honest, but it's the honesty of what we really feel, what is really going on. And sometimes we might actually see things as more complicated than they actually are. However, here's the thing. The sun is an energy of elevation, enlightenment, and rationality. It's an energy that says we're ready to see things clearly, see things differently, but it's also a principle of heat. It is activating our awareness but also the very energy of Pluto itself. Capricorn represents power, power struggles, power structures in our lives, and whom it is we have power, what we define as power itself, especially on grander scales. And so some of that may very much come into focus now, where we are seeing how power can sometimes run amok 
on a larger scale. And yet in our own lives as well, if you are a student of astrology, if you are familiar with your chart, then you know there's going to be at least one area of life that Capricornian energy shows up in. I'll have a celebrity example up here somewhere. And in that area of life now, there might be a sense of looking at some truth that is difficult to acknowledge, but also looking at that balance between power and powerlessness, where we are with that, how we feel about that, and what we're going to do about that, if there's anything we can do at all. It is going to be in at least one area of life that we are acknowledging some complexity here, but that complexity can ultimately empower us. It can lift us in key ways. It can even be inspiring as well. But the inspiration comes through the nitty gritty, through the profound honesty. The truest motivations, including those that arise from our wounding, from our trauma, and what it is that we might be considering power to be, but that actually is some type of trauma response, in some cases, very much in a moment that feels rather intense. But in some cases, it might actually be a more deeper contemplation than that. Regardless, though, emotions, energies are going to be running very high, but they can also switch up very quickly as well. That's the thing when we have planets at anoretic degrees. It means culmination, but that also means that things are about to change. Things are about to shift. And so a massively important part of that shift is, of course, Pluto moving back into the sign of Aquarius at the very end of the week. And this move is monumental, and I don't say that lightly. Um, this is where Pluto was. If you go back to the 21st of March of 2023, whatever's happening right now may in some way reflect back to what was happening more specifically around March 21st. That was when Pluto first crossed over from the very end of Capricorn into the very beginning of Aquarius as part of this larger uh, Pluto and Aquarius trend. And so whatever's happening may in some way reflect what was happening back then in our individual journeys. But keep in mind that that entire period um, from the 21st of March to June 11th of 2023, Pluto just kind of hung out at the very beginning of the sign of Aquarius. And so it isn't that it's just about a given moment, but chances are whatever is happening as we are finishing off this week and entering next week, it is hearkening to what was taking place for us back then in the spring of last year. With the sun meeting Pluto in the sky for the most intense day of the year uh, happening on Friday at 29 of Capricorn. Another thing to keep in mind with this very powerful energy is, yes, it represents an important moment where Pluto is making itself known. It's like saying, I was here. It's like scraping it into the wall in some way. But we are going to have a return to this energy once we navigate to the 3rd of November. I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. Energy that Michael Barwick and I spoke of when we talked about the year ahead uh, of 2024 together, and I'll be sure to link to that video below and you can find it on my channel. Um, but it is going to be at that time that we are going to have Mars opposite Pluto with Pluto at the very end of the sign of Capricorn. So you can see here that we've got these very important moments playing out. And what happens now in some way is going to be a foreshadow to what types of uh, need for balance, or I would even say some power struggles that could be playing out collectively and also personally as well for us uh, once we navigate later into this year. I do consider that it is a part of life. Having that sense of uncertainty, of tension, uh, of a sense of complication. It's almost like we have to know the intensity to know what it is to be light and lighthearted. We have to know that things can be complicated in order to appreciate what it is that actually can help move us towards simplicity and the peace that that grants us. It can be a time like this when we have this powerful conjunction that 
truths within ourselves of our real inner dynamic motivations, our projections are all coming to the surface. Where it is that we have regret, where it is that we're carrying these psychological bags, all of it comes to the surface along with a sense of where it is that perhaps carrying those bags is becoming a little bit too much. Realizing that is a powerful leap towards realizing what's not yours to continue to carry, what it is now that you can put down. And for many of us, that's going to include our very notions of power itself, where it is that we've bought into false senses of power, or where it is that we thought our own power was limited, or where it is that we didn't understand that healthy limits on our power are also a good thing. They come hand in hand with appreciating how it is and where it is and when it is. We can truly feel that much more unlimited and limitless as well. Now, a huge saving grace energy is going to be taking place thanks to Mercury. Yes, Mercury. Um, because it is going to be at the very beginning of this week that Mercury moves back into the sign of Capricorn. And this is part of the larger Mercury retrograde season. If you think back, it was the 3rd and the 23rd of December that Mercury was where Mercury is as we begin this week, entering, either moving into or out of the sign of Capricorn. This phase of the larger Mercury retrograde season is different than the energies I spoke of last week, for example. The phase of Sagittarius and Mercury retrograde season in that sign, really the key characteristic of that was squares of Neptune, which can be disillusioning, disappointing, and, and just sort of draining of, of mental focus and energy as well. However, as Mercury steps into the sign of Capricorn, instantly moves to align with Saturn in harmony and Jupiter in supreme harmony. That takes place over Thursday and Friday. And then at the very end of the week, Mercury leaves shadow, ending the larger Mercury retrograde season for good. What powerful energies to bring things to a culmination, bring things to a healthy close at this time. It is ultimately going to be Mercury that's going to ensure that we are talking about whatever we're feeling. We are keeping our eyes towards and our minds towards what really matters in a larger sense. And it gives us the opportunity to understand. Understanding can go a very long way towards ultimately bringing that sense of peace that so many of us do crave and some are able to acknowledge that we have that desire for greater peace more than others. A lack of peace can become comfortable in its own way because it becomes an emotion or a state of being uh, that we are familiar with. And chances are that familiarity might represent grooves that have been there that were created going all the way back to childhood. But we carry those patterns with us into adulthood. And so sometimes we just become so used to it that we think that's normal. And yet there is another way to be at peace, not just by going towards what's familiar and therefore comfortable, but by making the active choice to understand what it is to decide to complicate life as little as possible, because there are going to be moments when life is complicated anyways. And so these powerful energies all happening at the same time ultimately are going to be incredibly supportive of each other. Yes, we'll be feeling things very strongly with the sun conjunct Pluto, but we will also be able to make sense of it in a way that gives us hope, that empowers us to move towards the lived experiences that are more hopeful and more forward focused, more optimistic as well. It is ultimately in conversation and in our own understandings of what power really matters and what just doesn't, what is superficial, where power is being abused, that we're then able to seize and embrace 
and make full advantage of the power that we do have in our own lives, but also the power that we have to influence the collective in positive ways. Where it is we're hoping for practical changes individually or collectively, empowerment and hopeful news might be part of the picture uh, as we move into the second part of the week at this time. Now, the one area that's a little tricky, and I do want to be straightforward with you here, uh, takes place on Friday as well. And this is Venus connecting with Neptune in a conversation of tension. Um, and this can be disillusioning and disappointing. It is Venus that is in the sign of Sagittarius right now. Uh, it's a very freedom-oriented uh, sign. It loves a sense of possibility. But it's also Venus, which in and of herself has to do with ease and joy and love and the principle of love. Squares of Neptune, though, and especially with Neptune in the sign of Pisces, can speak to a sense of feeling like, is love enough? Love being a space that is disappointing or disillusioning to us in some way. And we're not really sure what love and freedom and how they go together um, is actually what we're going for. Does it actually feel right for us? Or is it that there are certain caveats there that don't necessarily make sense or feel comfortable in some way? Overall, though, Venus square Neptune uh, does suggest overdoing it. So whatever it is for you, you might be overdoing it, especially things like whatever represents the good life, whatever represents um, like wine and other substances that allow us to alter states of consciousness. It is now that overindulgence becomes very possible and us not realizing that there are certain limits there and that they're actually quite good. And where it is that we truly are not paying attention and we decide we are going to indulge full on, I think that's really when we're going to feel that Sun conjunct Pluto that much more. As much as Venus square Neptune uh, doesn't give thought to consequence, with Sun conjunct Pluto, those consequences come very quickly and they can be harsh as well. Remember, outer planets are involved here. Neptune and Pluto both are outer planets along with Uranus as well. And I consider the outer planets to be especially karmic. And what I mean by that is they represent energies that have a will of their own and they awaken an appreciation within us that there are certain things that we can't always control. That's what fate ultimately adds up to. And in the case of these powerful energies happening so close together, it speaks to a sense within ourselves that we pushed or we tried or we didn't care enough or we uh, indulged too much or we tried to avoid. And there are real consequences for that. And are we okay with those consequences or not? And part of those consequences just might be how it puts us up against power. Both Sagittarius and Pisces as signs have a sense of freedom to them. And then you add Venus and Neptune and their energies just flow so freely as well. But the sun and Pluto are very different energies. And in the sign of Capricorn at that, it is the structure that matters. And where it is that we've indulged to a point where we didn't follow the rules, the structures, what we knew it is that is responsible. That is when we feel that weight of consequence that much more. If ever there was a time not to make some big romantic declaration, this really would be it. Um, just because outcomes now uh, can feel really large. They can feel really intense. And there's also that measure of disappointment as well, especially where it comes to matters of love. Now, sometimes that's necessary because it ultimately moves us towards love that is more authentic. But that doesn't mean that the moment doesn't feel challenging. And that's what I see as we start moving towards the end of the week, is that there are so many energies that feel so concentrated and they're rising to the surface. 
And in the mix of it, our own emotions can feel like they're on a roller coaster, especially with Venus square Neptune. But with the square, there is always the invitation to put in work. And very often the activity, the work revolves around an understanding of what it is that is actually true where it is that we're avoiding something that is actually necessary for us to look at, for us to acknowledge. And where it is perhaps we are coming to different or new understandings about ourselves. And what is that going to mean in a larger sense for us? And especially where it is that we have fallen into sort of false types of or superficial types of or illusionary types of pleasure including pleasures uh, that are ultimately escapist and pleasures in love, where it is we've been telling ourselves a story. This is where that reality can feel really stark. But again, it is necessary. It's about acknowledging what is beautiful in the messy, in the imperfect. And what are we going to do about it? How are we going to deal with it? How are we now going to navigate forward? This is a turning point for the collective, but also individually as well. And I'm so sorry to say this, but I do think with that Venus square Neptune happening, like literally hours before, perfecting hours before the exact conjunction of the sun and Pluto, to me, this can represent a sense of feeling like our love was not validated or maybe just feeling like we're aware of where our hearts have been broken in some way. But sometimes that needs to happen so that we can grow forward from there that much stronger, that much more alive, and that much more able to love. And a love that involves seeing the nitty gritty, seeing what it is that is otherwise rejected, seeing what's under the surface and still finding love there still finding beauty there is a greater love than whatever stories or fantasies or fairy tales we might have found so alluring before. What I love about this week for us, there's so much here. It is a valuable and meaningful astrological moment. I am going to say I love the energy of being able to examine and understand that much more deeply that much more profoundly, what it is that is really going on for us and what power is to us, what is authentic power to us. We can get so caught up in what they call the rat race, right? We think that we have to be somewhere else and we're striving and we're growing and that has its place. Ambition is sacred. The energy of Capricorn does represent ambition. Ambition is the belief that you can work on your own behalf to move your life in the direction you desire to go, a direction that you imagined or envisioned, and maybe at times you thought was possible and at other times you didn't think was possible, and yet you were able to move yourself forward. Ambition is sacred in how it is it helps us to acknowledge our free will. But even free will and even ambition has its limits. And sometimes what we're going for isn't about that thing at all, but about some other need, some other wounding, some other trauma response. This is a huge moment of honesty for a lot of us. But the thing is that the truth can kick up a lot of stuff, old stuff, painful stuff now. But it is necessary. Because in that messiness, and in that truth, ultimately, as we see it, we acknowledge it, we feel it, we move through it. On the other side, we find a real sense of connection to all it is that we have yet to do in this lifetime, in this incarnation, from a greater place of peace. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you to everybody who likes, who comments, who subscribes, who shares, who thumbs up. All of it means so much. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, 
log on to NadiaShawSuperstars.com where you get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week for as low as just $3 a month with choose your membership rate. Now, higher tiers get you things like all access passes to Synchronicity University events, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. Links are in the description below. Year ahead horoscopes are now available for instant download at NadiaShaw.com and available to superstars at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. So these are an expanded look at the year ahead. Each video is between 39 and 49 minutes long, and it focuses in on what I think are going to be the most important trends and transits for us individually, depending on our sun, moon, and rising sign, um, and how we can understand it and navigate this time. So I'm looking at eclipses. I'm looking at Jupiter in 2024. I'm looking at Pluto in 2024 as well. And we're looking at the Mars retrograde season as well. So these are a first look to energies that uh, there are going to be special horoscopes for. Now, Pluto and Aquarius, um, the decade ahead video dives into Pluto and Aquarius for each and every sign. And remember, previews of these horoscopes are available as part of the second part of the interview that I did with the one and only Michael Barwick, uh, my own personal Jupiter, as I like to call him, one of my favorite astrologers. So yes, Michael Barwick, who is offering like a particular special horoscope right now. I shared it in the interview uh, that I did with him. So you might want to check out the, uh, the description there, but it's a specific horoscope he's offering just on looking at one of the big moments of the year, which is the Jupiter Uranus conjunction uh, that happens uh, the 20th of April. That's something I spoke of for each and every sign as well in those special horoscope videos, uh, but he's offering his own special and you can contact him directly about that to get a personalized look at that energy. Um, but it is in that interview that I do with him. It's kind of an interview. It's more like a conversation. And on the other side of it, you get to see previews. So you get some insights into what could be up ahead uh, and also get a little bit of a taste of what those downloads might be. And if that's something that feels right for you. Thank you so much to all of you who do purchase my special horoscopes. I am so very grateful for it. There is this consistent group and then I get new people in as well. And you really do support my work and your trust. It means so much to me. And I hope you absolutely love these special horoscopes looking at the year ahead of 2024 available now at NadiaShawSuperstars.com and instant download at NadiaShaw.com. Synchronicity University has some incredible classes underway right now. You don't want to miss them. And single classes are right now available. And you can go to synchronicityuniversity.com. Check out this incredible medical astrology course that's underway right now with the one and only Cameron Allen. The classes that have already taken place, you'll get them as instant downloads, plus get links and downloads to upcoming classes as well. We have Stormy Grace, uh, so incredible an astrologer. She's doing a five-week course right now, and it is all focused on the nodes in 2024, and how to make the most of them, powerful ways to start a brand new year. And the January 2024 speaker series is underway right now. Last week, we had my dear friend Andy of Wise Ass Astrology teaching a class on relationships. I know how many of you loved that class, uh, and you can get that now as an instant download. This weekend featured Cesar Love. Uh, he is the host of the podcast um, Sports Love Astrology, and he looked at basketball from an astrological perspective. And coming up as part of the January 2024 speaker series, we have Carrie Samuels. I loved getting to know Carrie on camera with you guys. And uh, she's teaching on numerology. She is brilliant. She is ready. I think you will love that class. Anna Andrade is going to be teaching on the vertex. This is a very powerful point in the astrology chart. It's an electric point, And you'll understand more of what that means when you go to her talk. And Carl Golemic as well is going to join us. Looking at the phases of the moon, where it comes to gardening with astrology, a very ancient 
a well-used technique that continues into this day that you can tap into of in the Northern Hemisphere. Before we get to spring, it's good to have this knowledge in place, right? If you're into your garden and all of that. So you can see here, incredible speakers and incredible programs are happening right now at synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. And thank you. Be on the lookout for some incredible programs that are going to begin to be launched this week. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. We have a jam-packed uh, upcoming season for March at Synchronicity University. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching. I am back in Rio and back in Brazil. Uh, Rio de Janeiro is so very special to me. I've been reconnecting with friends, uh, having fun, enjoying, uh, switching up the energy, all of that. And it's been uh, so, so very healing for me. So I absolutely love it. It's a very special place if you haven't been to Rio before. Um, thank you for walking this journey with me as well. It means a lot to me to be able to share wherever it is that life takes me with you and to continue connecting with you astrologically along the way. What a privilege it is. And uh, for you seeing me as part of your spiritual journey. Thank you. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.